I feel cursed. That's how blessed I am. That's the smallest mini bus with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! I'm pissed. I'm trying really hard not to be, but I'm pissed. I'm at Love's in Belen, New Mexico. I've been here since yesterday afternoon. I stopped here on my way to meet some friends in Mountain Air, and I'm, I'm taking advantage of their parking lot. But I'm also heavily patronizing the place. I did my laundry here last night, two loads, wash and dry. That's about 12 bucks. Then I ate dinner at the Arby's here. That was about 14 bucks. And this morning, I had a breakfast sandwich and a cup of coffee from the store that was 10 bucks. And then I took a shower. That cost 15 bucks, which is ridiculous, but I did it. So I spent in less than 24 hours at this travel center, which is supposed to be for people like me who travel. I have spent about 50 bucks. But believe it or not, that's not what I'm pissed about. About 15 minutes ago, I got a knock on the door, and there are two deputy sheriffs standing there. They tell me that the management has requested that I leave the premises. Now, at this point, I'm I'm getting ready to leave anyway. I'm sweeping up. I'm putting away my clothes. I'm still drying my hair from my $15 shower. But I haven't even been here 24 hours. They point out the signs that say one-hour parking, but what loves have I ever been to that didn't have those signs? They have them so they can kick people out who are (laughs) undesirable, and I guess that's me now. But people sleep overnight at Love's all the time. In fact, there's an RV almost next to me right now that was here when I arrived, and it's still here. It doesn't look like it's leaving anytime soon, and nobody has told them to leave. But, you know, okay, I'm leaving. I'm getting ready to leave anyway, so no problem. I don't want conflict. You know, give me 20 minutes, and I'm going to get out of here. I don't know what I did to get on the undesirable list, but I know that some places are weird about schoolies, and I try not to take that personally. I don't want conflict. I'm going to do my chores, and I'm going to go. But five minutes later, they're back. They say that the manager has requested that I leave right now. And I say, well, gee, it takes a few minutes to put everything away so I can drive. And is there some kind of problem? Yes, they say. The manager wants me gone because I have been panhandling. I don't think I have to tell you, I have not been panhandling. I've never panhandled in my life. I told him, who says I was panhandling? Can you tell whoever said I was panhandling to come out here and take a good look at me and tell me that I'm the person that they saw panhandling? Because this, I'm taking personally. So the deputies go inside and they come out with this guy. He's the manager. He has a badge with his, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want anybody to give him a hard time, but he has on a name tag. So I know his name, and I'll have it handy when I call the Love's corporate office. I'm going to call him Lionel Poindexter, because that's the kind of name he deserves. I actually think that's a character on the Partridge family. But anyway, I'm going to call him that instead of what I really want to call him, which I'm sure you can imagine. So I say to Lionel Poindexter, so you saw me panhandling. And he says, well, I didn't, but one of my associates did. And I say, well, could you bring your associate out here? Because I wasn't panhandling. I work for a living. Look at my bus. Look at my computer. Look at my desk setup. I'm a working person. I'm not a beggar. And he looks kind of stunned, but I think he actually believed me, but he gets defensive instead. And instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, he stammers that, well, well, you've been here we have signs. We can ask you to leave if you've been here more than an hour. And he turns around and goes back in. So I said to the deputies, listen, I'm going to finish putting away my clothes. I'm going to sweep my floor and then I'm going to go. And they say, okay. And the deputies, they apologized to me. They said, listen, it's their property. If they ask us to get rid of somebody, we have to do it. But we're sorry. We didn't mean to give you such a hard time. So as soon as I'm done recording this, I'm going to go. I was going to give loves some more of my money because I was going to fuel up. But I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to find someplace else to fuel up. So I left Love's and I came over here to Flying J to get fuel and I saw this bus. It was a very cool bus. I was looking at one a lot like that before I got Max, so I was interested. I, I kind of wanted to see the inside. I looked up the markings on the side and it used to be a shuttle bus at a ski resort. I mean, obviously it's not a ski shuttle now. It's being schoolyized. But I kind of hung out because I was hoping the owner would show up so that I could see inside. And I thought maybe I can even like shoot a tour, do a little interview. So I waited and the owner did show up and I did get to see the inside and I did an interview and that interview did not turn out quite the way I was expecting. 
My name is yeah. Knuzzle. Not sure if you heard that. He said, my name is Knuzzle. So this uh, is pretty much staying the same, except for I'm getting a smaller wood stove. As soon as we got inside, I could see that Knuzzle was in mid-build, so there wasn't really a lot to tour. But I was already in interview remote, so I asked him some questions about the bus. It's a 99 BC 3500 HD chassis, and it has a 6.5 liter non-turbo diesel. I love the size and the shape. It's just perfect. It's everything I need. Not quite everything I want, but everything I need. And my <laughs> wants are slowly changing. What got you on the road in the first place? I was a child of drug and alcohol abuse. I joined the military and after I got out, I was working with a awards and, and picture framing company. I was essentially at the top of my game and I could not be happy. When I hit the road, I had no idea where I was going or what I was going to do. And I thought I was just going to go back home and into California to do what everybody else does. But along the way, you know, I was on the ground, I met some people, and I just ended up diverting my path and becoming the happiest I could ever be. So a trip on a Greyhound, one thing leads to another, and boom, he's a nomad. I feel so blessed. It is ridiculous. I feel cursed. That's how blessed I am. Sorry about the dogs and the wind and all that. There's a bunch of this you can't really hear. We started talking about how to earn a living on the road. Like Renaissance fairs and, and the um, Gem and Mineral Show, but they're becoming less and less accessible to us traveling people. And then Knuzzle said something that really got my attention. He said, there's not that many work options available for us homeless people. Now, that's not a word I'd use to describe myself. Do you consider yourself a homeless person? Most definitely. I've been traveling for 12 years, so I consider homeless people essentially as being treated differently just because their housing situation. Interesting, because I got so many friends who do this. You know, nobody, none of us ever think of it as we, we don't have a home. I am comfortable, very comfortable with what I do. When I fly my sign, I want people to feel comfortable and to have an access to give without restraint, mm -hmm. knowing exactly where their money's going, which is a problem I think that, that people can't do to their friends or their family. So Knuzzle actually panhandles. When I hold a sign that says gas, not cash, it is directly devoted to intentionally trying to get people to give me gasoline instead of mm -hmm. cash, because people don't know where cash goes. So I give an outlet to people that want to give and receive appreciation. Humbly. So you're saying you're doing a service, offering people a way to give. Thank you for understanding it. Yeah. I believe the whole world is slowly but surely coming to this understanding. Yeah. No one's too far. No one's too broken. God says his heart is full. How did you, uh... I always give rides. I spent five years on foot. Yeah. In 42 states, nine freight trains. Yeah. I know what it's like to need a ride. I asked Knuzzle if I could buy him some gas or some food, and he said no thanks. Both his tanks were full, both the buses and his stomach. So I went inside and sat down for lunch at Denny's, and Knuzzle and his passenger got on their way. My first thought when he said he holds that sign was, oh, you're the one that ruins it for the rest of us. But he's not asking for money. He's not taking more than he needs. And maybe there is, maybe there's something to that idea that allowing people to help you is sort of a service. Since I've been out here, I've seen a lot of poverty in the nomad world. And I've heard a lot of nomads, even poor ones, complaining about homeless people. I've done it myself, but I think when other people look at us, they they see homeless people pretty much. I mean, are we in this together? Does it really matter if you came to this life in a sprinter with a big emergency fund or 
in a broken down old van because you couldn't afford rent? Does it matter if you found peace in a life you love? I mean, we're nomads. I think, I think we're all in this together, but then look at me. I was okay with getting kicked out of loves, but not okay with someone accusing me of panhandling, of basically being Knuzzle. So am I really so much better than him? My boss is old and it breaks down and there's going to come a time when I need some help. Still, I'm saying I'm better than that guy. I want to stop doing that. I'm interested to hear what you think about all this. Let me know in the comments. And after that, meet me over here. If you haven't seen this one, or even if you have, time to see it again.